Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Hi, this is the fourth video in the series for uh, painting snow techniques and this is the second uh, video where I am finishing up the bird painting that I showed in the first two snow techniques videos. So if you haven't watched those videos you might want to either stop and go back and watch the first two snow techniques videos and see how I started this painting or you can go back and, and watch them afterward if you would like. So in uh, this part of the painting, I am continuing to add layers. And I uh, had started the snow in the previous video. And then I uh, got uh, the bird pretty much done. And I don't know if I go back. I think there was a couple things that I did later, but uh, he's pretty much done. So I've started to paint uh, the pine needles and this will not be a full explanation of the video. I am just showing you sort of the process and then when I do some things on the snow or something that has to do more with the snow, I will uh, give you a little bit of information on that. And as I put the pine needles in, I am looking for changes in value. So I want to have uh, the pine needles either appear lighter or darker uh, compared to what's next to them. And in some places it's okay if they're close in value. And then in other areas I want them to separate. So uh, depending on what my painting is doing, I may adjust it from what the photograph is showing. And I also did uh, in my drawing, there were a couple pine needles on the photo that were kind of in front of the head of the bird a little bit. So I uh, took those out and put a few pine needles behind the bird, but I wanted to have the front of the bird a little more in the open. And on the uh, bottom right, I have started to place the lighter pine needles on the paper and I am will end up leaving some of the white behind the, some of those pine needles so that it looks like there's a little bit of snow behind the needles in that area. So I'm painting around uh, either the pine needles that are in the foreground and I'm also painting around some of the lighter areas and or the, the dark areas of the background. And I tend to uh, paint around an area for a while and then I may move on to something else. I am using uh, the same colors in variation for the different pine needles and uh, so as I work Around the painting, sometimes I will take a break, like right here. There are some a little uh, brown, I don't know what they're called, uh, parts of the pine needle that I have uh, taken a break from painting the needles themselves, and I've started to place that on there. And this is the first pass of color at this point, and then as it starts to dry, I go back and uh, add some more value to the area to give it form. And then one of the things that I also will do is when I am doing something that's got some parts of it that are complicated is I will go and find uh, the areas that I know what the colors are or where I'm at. So I took a, a break from painting the green pine needles and I am putting some of the uh, dead needles on that are tan or brown. And uh, this that's what I'm working on at this point so that I can kind of find those areas and then I'll know where I want to put the green when I start to work on those. And from the previous video you can see that I already have uh, shadows on the snow area and uh, that is the first coat. It won't get a lot more but that first coat allows me to uh, sort of figure out uh, where my shadows are and then I go and place as you can see, I'm placing pine needles in uh, around the snow now, and 
I already have the shadows there. You could do it the opposite way. You could paint the needles on and then paint the shadows around uh, those areas. And uh, it really kind of depends on how you see things and whether or not you would understand where you are uh, in the process when you do one way or the other. And now I'm going back to the brown parts of the pine needle in that area and adding some value to it. And as in the uh, last video, I still have masking fluid where, that I spattered with a toothbrush over the majority of the, well, it is, it's around the whole painting and that when I remove it will look like it's snowing. And I'm adding more of the needles now around the snow. And as I add those needles around the white snow, it starts to help give me a clue on whether or not I need to adjust any of the shadows on the snow because that darker value of the pine needles will um, help give me an idea of whether or not I painted the snow shadows uh, dark enough. And a lot of this uh, part of the painting is just taking the time to paint each pine needle and, and fill my brush and go back and get more paint and then a, um, change value and color every now and then. So this part of the painting, uh, I think, was an additional two to three hours of adding um, those pine needles in there. And that's partly why I am not doing this as a full tutorial uh, because it's a, a lot of uh, hours that go into paintings. And this painting is uh, seven and a half by ten and a half. So it's not even quite a quarter sheet. Uh, but uh, some of my larger paintings can take upwards of 60 hours. So they uh, can take quite a while. And I have started to go back between some of the pine needles in some areas and add uh, in, in this area, I'm adding in the uh, darker value that I want between some of those needles where they're either in shadow or some of the background uh, color is uh, peeking through some of the needles and or they may be overlapping and causing a darker area. So Starting to put in that darker value uh, will also help make the lighter parts of the snow stand out. And then when I remove the mask later on, you will see uh, some of the uh, little dots of white where I uh, spattered the mask to make it look like it was snowing. So you need those strong values to uh, really give you the idea that you're seeing white. And I don't use white on my paintings. Uh, I like the white of the paper, and so I try to uh, always paint around or reserve the whites of the paper. Still adjusting things here and there and adding darker values where I need them. And some of these pine needles are uh, very close in value to each other. So I will have to go back on some of them and separate with some shadows or a little bit of a darker uh, wash over some of the pine needles to separate them a little bit. And I do go back right in that area and I darkened and in this area as well. I darkened some of the shadow on the snow and that was pretty much all that I remember uh, adjusting for the snow. There were, are a couple places later on that I did add a little bit of value here and there. And in general, I wanted it to uh, feel white and not too dark, but I also wanted to increase the shadows a little bit more. So... There are some places uh, like right down in here where the pine needles were sticking into the snow or out of the snow 
and I needed to uh, darken the value around them a little bit. And now I'm going back and adjusting some of those pine needles. I'm adding shadows to some of them and I will be adding uh, a little bit of shadow over uh, some of the pine needles as well so that they feel like there's a pine needle crossing over the top somewhere that is creating a shadow across them. And right there, I am adding a little bit of darker value at the bottom of the pine needle on some of them where they are coming out of the snow because that will help give the uh, a little more form and depth to that area to make it feel like the snow is around an object. So between these different clips, you can probably see a few adjustments here and there. Something may appear a little darker or it may appear like I've placed a shadow in an area. And uh, so I continue to make adjustments. And uh, right here, I'm going back to the snow that is around the bird's beak. And I added just a little bit of value on the left side so that it would feel like it's more lit on the right. And now I am going back and using my rubber cement pickup tool. This is after the painting was dry and I'm lifting the masking fluid off of the painting. And this is always fun. It, it's, it's kind of actually kind of like Christmas where you're opening um, something up and getting that surprise of, of what it will look like, what it will be. And so removing the masking fluid, hopefully everything looks good. And um, there are a couple places after I've removed the mask that I go back and make some adjustments because they are just a little bit uh, wide or uh, it's splattered a little too much in one area. So where my brush is right there, there were a little too many dots of mask uh, that left big white areas. So I went back with some of the color that was pretty close to my background and I uh, covered over a few of those white areas to adjust what was on the paper then. And now as I am going around the paper, it may not look like I'm doing a whole lot, but what I am doing is using a damp brush to actually go and soften some of the uh, snow areas that are have removed the mask for that where it's feeling like it's snowing because some of them can either feel a little odd in shape and also to have a little change in value here and there is really helpful. And I usually don't leave masked areas uh, completely alone. I will go back and make adjustments. Like this area on this branch where I had painted snow, it was a little too flat. So using a scrubber brush with a little bit of water, I went back and lifted the edge so that it was a little more rounded and it would uh, give the feeling that the snow was a little more dimensional in that area. And I hope uh, following this process was interesting and you learned some good ways to do snow techniques. And if you have a tip, trick, or technique video for watercolor that you would like to see, please leave a comment below and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.